Well, today's the last day of what is the 2023 uh, muzzleloader season. Uh, it's 10th of January, 2024, and uh, I'm going to a really windy day again, south wind. My intentions were good to go back to the cabin farm tonight, um, no matter what. Um, I sat there last night, had a pretty good sit, but I can't get in there tonight. The snow drifts are three, four feet, and even if I was willing to walk three quarters of a mile, which is the right, it's the right access for this wind, um, through three, four foot snow drifts, um, the thought of shooting one and then trying to get it out of there by hand just didn't excite me all that much. So I'm um, sitting behind the house here today which is actually a better wind. We've got a south wind today, so this is actually a better wind for this spot. And we do have some deep snow and some cold, so we'll see what happens here. And I'll bring, I'll bring any footage that I get tonight um, at the end of the video. So this is basically day 17 now through the end of late muzzleloader. Um, here, are the, here are the highlights, there ain't many, but here are the highlights. And then at the end, I'm gonna circle back and I'm gonna tell you why I think Lily was not successful this year in her 11 days of hunting and what what I plan to do different for future hunts for late season. So here we, this is January 3rd now, and what we're doing is we're trying to get close into bedding. Um, you can see that tree right there with climbing sticks going up, that's an archery set. So ideally, um, we would have that double hung so we could sit closer to this bedding area and have a double stand hung in there for Lily for late muzzle order. We ended up not seeing nothing on this hunt, but um, we're just trying to get in closer to bedding. Um, here's another example. Now this is January 4th. We're getting in close to bedding. And this is an archery stand. This is set up for archery hunting. So we're just trying to sneak in as close as we can to our bedding areas now. And unfortunately, we either have to sit on the ground, or in this case, I have like a 2 by 8 um, jammed in the crotch of a tree so we could sit some of these archery stands. And this is one of the nights, I think this is one of the nights we got chainsawed. So they started firing up chainsaws to our south, and a bunch of deer had already spooked through, and then these does... These doe family groups started coming through. But a lot of the deer that we saw this night um, were very agitated and nervous. And I think it's because of those chainsaws getting fired up so close. Today is likely Lily's last day. It's January 5th. And uh, before we turn the camera on, we were just kind of going through her hunt a little bit. So this is day 11 for Lily. And... I always talk about you need three things to consistently kill mature bucks. And the first is they have to be there. They have to be on the property you're hunting. So we know there's mature bucks here. So that's, we can't whine or complain about that. There's mature bucks here. We grow mature bucks. That's not an issue. The second thing I'm going to skip. The third thing is you can't be an idiot. you got to have at least some amount of woodsmanship skills you know you can't be walking in and driving your four-wheeler right to your blind and these kind of like goofy things you know what I mean and I think most hunters have a fair amount of woodsman if you're watching this video you probably have at least an average amount of woodsmanship skills so the second thing that you need that's the third thing the second thing you need is you just need time you can't come in hunting camp late muzzle order hunt for an hour and then expect to kill a big buck you can't do it in a day. I mean, it's possible, right? But the more time you have, the better. So this is day 11. And we were talking really on out of 11 days, two of those days we got dogged. So dogs came through, likely bumbled our entire hunt. Um, the one day we saw it, we had dogs. We still saw some deer, but typically that's our best bedding area. We didn't see anything come out. The other day we sat right in the same blind. We got dogged and see a single deer. What you don't know is the last couple days we got pretty aggressive and hunted a neighboring farm to this. Um, and two of those days we got chainsawed. So the neighbors were cutting firewood or you know logging their you know cutting down some timbers, whatever they were doing. So he didn't have. I mean, we saw a deer. 
but they were very skittish. Didn't really do what we thought they were gonna do, so two days we got chainsawed. So out of 11 days, we really had like seven, what I would say, you know, good viable hunts. And out of those seven days, we haven't seen a mature buck. Um, so this blind has been a struggle for us this year because it's been warm, no snow, grounds not froze, a lot of food, deer are sped out. We've, we've talked about this before. Um, Wishbone sat up here on the hill and saw, what'd she say, seven deer? Mm -hmm. Seven deer out on, these, out on this corner. The second night, actually. The first night she saw five. Yep. Actually, we all saw it. Yep. And then the other day she saw seven, seven. and she saw a deer on the cow pasture, which is to the north here. So she saw, you know, roughly a dozen deer. Yeah. Lily and I, one night when we got chainsawed, got down, you know, after what we thought that, you know, any deer on a bed to feed pattern, we're going to leave that bedding area. And we got out in time to glass, and we saw, you know, five, ten deer. Who knows? It was dark, but we could see them with our uh, optics from about a half mile away. So we're just, we're going to get away from those chainsaws because that was, uh, and they were going, we, we could hear them again today. The chainsaws were fired up. We and saw we a bunch saw of deer. Them. We saw like 15 deer run out of that wood lot. So, you know, I'm not whining. That's, that's hunting when you have, you know, here we have 80 acres and 15 acres of cover. So, you, you know, we don't have, I'm not complaining, I'm not whining. You know, we don't have 3,000 acres spread out over 20 different farms. So you have to deal with this stuff. Every hunter that's watching this video right now has probably dealt with dogs, chainsaws, neighbors driving four-wheelers. That's just how it works. So my gut instinct would be to get close to that bedding area tonight, but we don't want to get chainsawed again on Lily's last sit. And we're starting to see some deer come out here. So we're on these, this, you know, standing corn one last time. And uh, I guess it's not guaranteed, but it's pretty pretty much guaranteed this is Lily's last hunt. Unless, like, we see something just awesome tonight, we want to come back. But um, that's the game plan for tonight. And once you know it, now the forecast and, you know, a couple of days is, you know, blizzard-like conditions and the highs and the teens. low teens and stuff. Which, again, deer move when it's warm, but they'll, they're will they forced on these standing grains when it gets cold, but it'll be too late for you. Yeah. So, just kind of wanted to cover, kind of to sum up Lily's hunt a little bit, just so you kind of know what happened. And uh, I'm personally disappointed. I'm, I'm glad it kind of lasted. 11 days so I got to spend 11 days in the blind with Lily so let's hope it happens tonight um but it's not you know it's not ideal what we wanted to have happen for her but uh you know let's keep our fingers crossed for tonight and see if something comes out in this corn and see if we can make it happen it would be the first time that we got a deer in the last hour or last day so So here's that two by eight that I was sitting on, um, jammed in in the kind of this crotch of this tree for some of Lily's hunts. She was on that ladder stand below me. So I wanted to film that, but I snuck in here um, after Lily had gone close to bedding and I saw quite a few deer, pretty natural movement. All, all deer were pretty much on a bed to feed pattern, but it's really tough. It was really tough to film any of this stuff. These deer are, they've gotten chainsawed and dogged and hunted for, you know, three weeks for shotgun season. And it seems like you just breathe heavy and these does are picking you off or even fawns were busting me. So I saw quite a few deer this night, a few decent bucks, but I couldn't even get, I couldn't get them on film. It was just, I couldn't move. It would have been hard to actually pick up the muzzle loader right here and, and take a shot. It's just so uh, quiet. These deer are so just ready to bust anybody for any kind of movement. So this is the next day. This is also a different spot. I really would have liked to have taken Lily to this spot a couple times. Sets up perfect for a south wind. Here's a ditch crossing. And this is an archery stand. But I've seen some big, big mature bucks out of this stand during late muzzleloader. 
and I wasn't able to take her because there's only one. It's it's a ladder stand. There's only one uh, one spot for one person, one hunter here. So this stand will get double hung um, for next year for sure and going forward. And just like every other hunt this late season, it's just been quiet and the deer have been, you know, fairly agitated because of all the commotion that I've talked about earlier. So I filmed some of these deer, but not all of them. It was just pretty tough to get any footage. I could pretty much scream in the blind tonight and there's not a deer that's gonna hear me. Uh, I had a hard time getting in, in the blind tonight. Um, I don't know if we got eight, 10 inches of snow, but it's 40 mile an hour winds. I'm sure you can hear it in the background. And there's snow drifts three, four feet all the way here. Um, probably the bright idea would be just not hunt, but we've we've had really good hunts. I've had really good hunts in this weather, late season. So it'd be pretty hard to keep me on the blind tonight. So I'm sitting at the cabin farm, standing corn and beans. Um, I had high hopes for the cabin farm for Lily's hunt this year, but the wind directions and the uh, weather just didn't cooperate. We got dogged on um, one night. It's kind of the story of her hunt, but tonight we got blizzard conditions, 40 mile an hour winds. Um, but the beans, if they can't dig through to the corn that's run over, my beans this year were probably three, four feet high and they're loaded with pods. So I'm expecting to see some deer tonight, um, for sure, if not tonight, tomorrow night. So last two days of the hunt this year, uh, we'll see what happens. I just want to cover a little bit about these warm season grasses. So that's kind of like a thing right now is these switch grass. So all these grasses out here, you can see they're all knocked down. I had a trail mowed right through there. And last year, this big 10 pointer came out and my switchgrass, I shouldn't say switchgrass, my little blue stem, big blue stem CRP mix out here wasn't quite as tall and right over there along that edge I actually saw this big 10 pointer stand up. Now when I was hunting with Lily, when I was hunting with Lily here the last couple weeks, um, you couldn't see that edge over there because these uh, warm season grasses were probably, oh, I don't know, seven feet, eight feet tall. And there's probably deer bedded in there on the flats and on the benches out in that CRP mix. But not in this weather, they're not gonna be. And in fact, now with this deep snow, they, they probably won't be out here uh, bedded. They won't use this um, for a bedding cover at all. Um, but they'll likely bed along these feathered edges where there's like some cedars. So a lot of people, a lot of YouTube stars and stuff will say eliminate all your cedars. Um, and I think that's a bad idea. Some of the best bedding habitat that I've ever seen in my life is CRP grasses, warm season grasses, switch grass, big blue stem, little blue stem. You know what I'm talking about, these high structure um, warm season grass mixes like in CRP. Um, or you can buy like RC Big Rock, Cave and Rock switch grass. But anyway, some of the best bedding habitat that I've seen is not a pure stand of that stuff, but it's a stand of that stuff with cedars in it, or there's cedars coming out in ditches, and that's where they'll bed. So if they're bedded out in the middle of your CRP, that's only because that's what's available. That's the best of what's available. But if you give them some cedars along some edge or pockets of cedars or pines out in your switchgrass, that's where they're going to bed. Um, so I think that's kind of a distinction, you know, people will, will deer bed in switchgrass or will deer bed in warm season grasses. Of course they will. Deer will bed anywhere. Um, but what's preferred? Preferred is where there's some structure and I like pines, cedars. Cedars are easy to grow. Um, they'll grow like weeds. Just, just let them come up and, uh, and that's where the deer are going to bed. So I don't eliminate all my cedars. I'll cut some out if I have to because it's part of a CRP program. Um, but I definitely won't eliminate them because when you get weather like this, that's what deer are going to seek, that thermal cover. So I would make the argument that late muzzleloader hunting, you know, post rut late season hunting at my cabin farm is just, it's phenomenal. It's good, good hunting. 
But we only got to sit there a couple times for Lily. And uh, with that warm weather, the deer just weren't forced out into these standing grains. Here you can see these beans. Now there is a little bit of a crest of a, of a rolling hill here. But these beans are probably, oh, I don't know, three feet tall, loaded with pods. And with that cold weather, wind, deeper snow, I don't know if I saw maybe 20, 25 deer this night. A lot of deer came piling into this cover. I want to show this short clip. So these warm season grasses, when Lily was hunting with me, you couldn't see deer in them. But now that snow and wind has kind of blown a lot of that um, cover over. So the best buck I saw this night was that same eight pointer that I saw with Lily a few days earlier. And I did see a ton of deer on this food for this hunt, just a ton of deer, uh, but no shooter bucks. So today is the last day of the season, and I kind of want to reflect on Lily's hunt, um, her 11 days that she hunted, and why she wasn't successful, why I wasn't able to put her on a mature buck. That's what she said she wanted this year was a mature buck. So she had 11 days to hunt, and out of those 11 days, um, we got chainsawed twice. So the neighbors fired up chainsaw and were cutting firewood or or doing some logging. Um, we got dogged at least twice. And then one of her last days, the neighbor's cows got out on the property we were hunting and they were yelling and screaming, chasing cows in. So five days out of the 11, we got bumbled pretty good. Um, nothing we can really do about that, just kind of some bad luck. So you hear me talk all the time about you need enough time um, to be able to kill these mature bucks. You can't just come into camp, hunt, hunt one hour or one day and, and get it done. So that was an issue we had. But really, that's kind of an excuse because we still had six good days. And I feel where I failed Lily was I did not have a backup plan for sitting these blinds over destination food. So these blinds over destination food are really phenomenal spots to sit during the post rut, during late season, if you get some cold and some snow because it forces deer to, instead of spreading out and rummaging and just kind of picking and choosing what they want because they're selective eaters, it forces deer, um, the cold and the snow does, to these standing grains. I really didn't have a good backup plan for the warm uh, season we, that we had. We'll get, we got some snow and some cold now, but Lily's gone. But, um, so that needs to be corrected um, going forward. So I'm going to have to double hang basically some archery sets that set up for north winds, south winds, you know, east winds, west winds. You get the idea. i got to have a backup plan for these late season hunts so we can get closer to bedding areas. So what that does is if you've got a mature buck that's bedding in some, you know, he's taking the preferred bedding habitat. And we know where that is. We know where these bucks are bedding. And I'm trying to pull them out of that bedding into a destination food plot where I can sneak in off, you know, off the backside, hunt far away from the destination food plot, and then you know shoot 150 yards in with a muzzle order to these standing grains, pulling them out of that bedding area. And I do that because during the late season, if you go, if you're going in too close and you're and you're being pretty aggressive, you can burn your hunt out pretty quick. The problem this year is they were so spread out, they didn't come to those standing grains until after dark. Even though they were up feeding, they were uh, getting our standing grains after dark. So if you know where they're bedding and you can actually move in really close to where they're bedding, now you can cut them off. So even if they leave their bedding area and they, and they bumble around and they're eating some uh, cut beans or some cut corn or they're hitting some alfalfa that's still green on the bottom, you're close to the bedding area so you cut them off before they disperse and start to feed all over. So that'll be my strategy for next year. Um, going forward so that's that's kind of you know you can blame the neighbors you can blame the weather you can blame a lot of different things but really 
uh, I feel it was my fault for not having a backup plan, and that will get corrected. Um, one mature buck was sighted this whole late muzzleloader season. I saw it, I think it was Christmas Eve. Um, I think it was right around there. Uh, not too far from here, I saw a worm, and that's it. Um, sitting over destination food um, this season with the warm weather did pay off for us. And that's the first year, I, I really think that's the first year in a long time that we haven't killed a mature buck over destination food during the late season. But I don't want to have another scenario where we don't have options. So um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, late muzzleloader hunt. Uh, I'm sitting here in here waiting for the season to basically get done. And uh, we'll see what comes to this destination standing corn here for the uh, last couple hours sit here. I can see their pond. They're in here. There's deer tracks all over the place, but hopefully they get here tonight before dark. So on my last sit of the year, I went behind the house. I really wanted to get back to the cabin farm, um, but I couldn't do it with those snow drifts. And I actually saw quite a few deer for my last sit. Bunch of does and fawns, bunch of smaller bucks. These are the two biggest bucks that came in. I think there are a couple two-year-olds um, feeding on the standing corn, eating the cobs right off the standing corn. That's just kind of fun to watch this. But that's kind of how I finished up my uh, my late season with a sit behind the house and quite a few deer.